friends, hello everyone, welcome back to another C++ tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'll be talking about make files in C++. Now make files is a rather complex topic and there's a lot of things to it. Most of the time it's Googling to figure out what you really want to do. But I'll show you the basics of make files and it'll show you almost a somewhat semi real world example of a make file, one that I use in one of my projects. Now, when you think of make file, you can think of Java Gradle in a sense. Make files just basically do the compiling for you. So instead of you having to say C or G, and then pass in all of the files you want to compile and then you have to add flags to specify you want this library and this library and this library to be included as well which can be a lot of flags that can be difficult to manage whilst you try to execute that it's a massive pain in the butt that's the point i'm trying to make because if you ever ever see me write some g plus plus stuff here even just this part here it's already a lot. Now imagine you have a file with a ton of things here. So x.cpp, y.cpp. So let's say you have about 10, and this is a small program, just 10 objects that you have to include here. And then after those 10 objects, you also have to include flags of some sort to specify where libraries are. For example, dash i is, I think, a common one, and dash l I also think is a common one, but I can't quite remember. But you have to add all these tons of flags and things if you want to link libraries and things. It's very weird, and it's a lot of effort. So we use make files to not only make this easier for the developer, but also easier for the next person who's going to come and try and compile all of this. Now you have to take note that make files works slightly differently compared to Windows than on Mac and Linux. I'll be covering the Linux and Mac way, but if you're a Windows user, you can still follow along. You might just not be able to quite use everything I'm using in this video, but you will still be able to learn what a make file is and how it works. Cool. So let's move our vector class outside let's go here and create vector.hpp and vector.cpp then with our vector hpp we can just copy this paste it here and of course do our hashtag if not define vector underscore h define vector underscore h and then hashtag end if. Cool. And then of course we can copy this and we can go to vector.cpp. And we can of course include, include vector.hpp and then just append the vector everywhere here. And then we can just clean up here. Cool. So now we have our extra class and we can now move this away and say hashtag include vector hpp and i think we actually left this broken in the previous tutorial yes we need to change that back to subtract and here we change that back to subtract cool and let's make sure this works by just compiling this g plus plus main.cpp vector.cpp dash o output and then run that output. Okay, so if this compiled and run, then we're good to go. If you are on Linux, you can just go sudo apt install, of course, the equal symbol, cmake or sudo pacman s cmake or whatever your distribution accepts. Point is, you have to install CMake. I think this is true for Mac and Windows. You have to install CMake because that will kind of make everything for you. Cool. Now let's assume you have CMake installed. 
Next up, you can say make file and create a new file called make file. And make file will contain a bunch of code for us that we can use to tell it how to compile everything. Now, first, I'm going to start off really basic, and then I'm going to show you a more extreme example of a CMake file. So let's first start with output, and we can just say main.o, and then vector.o, and here we could say main.o, and I'm going to explain all of this in a second, is main.cpp, and then g++ dash c main.cpp and we of course have to go here and say g++ main.o utils.o dash o output and then here and yet again I'll explain this vector.o is equal to vector.cpp and we can just do that and then we can do clean which is just an extra function we can add rm anything with an output cool this is a very basic make file okay so on the first line output main.o vector.o we are saying that it should generate object files that will be later on compiled to the output file we want now object files you can think of are as like compiled C++ files. In our case, we just always say output. But if we ever try and do our G++ thing we do, and we just change from output, or we don't even add an output here. So if we were to remove this dash O flag, then you'll notice we actually get an A dot out. So it's the same thing in a sense. And then these C's here, they're telling us to generate this object files. So if we were to go here, and say g++ dash c and let's go here you'll see we have a vector.o and a main.o and we actually have to change this vector.cpp and vector.o to a capital case v anyhow so these just generate these object files oh well, almost delete everything now these object files are just compiled c++ files However, they are in their own file. Meaning, if they have been compiled and you want to change one thing in one file, then at least as long as you haven't changed anything in that file, it will stay compiled. For example, let's say we create object files and I have a main.o and a vector.o. If we change something in main.cpp, it will generate a new main.o file, but not a new vector.o. So only a new main.o file, because we only changed something in main. So there's nothing else to change in vector. And here we're saying we want to then compile these objects into our output we want. And what I've just explained might just sound very all over the place but this allows us to never have to really recompile the entire program because once your program gets really big if you have to recompile the entire program every time you write you change a small thing in the program it's going to be a massive pain in the butt because then you have to wait sometimes 30 minutes just for the program to finish compiling. And let's say you make one change in one file. And you have to wait 30 minutes to see that one change in that one file. Just because you have to compile everything again. So instead, we tell CMake, create object files of every file we have. Then take those object files and compile them all into an output file. Then we can run that output file, that executable. But once we change something in main.cpp, then only generate an output file for main.cpp. Do not regenerate an output file for anything else. Because there's no need to do that. Because we only change something in main.cpp. So then it only has to compile one file instead of all 30 files you might have in your program. And this could make compiling a lot easier and a lot faster 
And then of course this clean just means remove all of the output files. On Windows you won't be able to use RM as well as G++ because these are things only available I think on Mac and Linux. Also this clean here that is optional if you don't want to you don't need to have that there. We only have it because it would clean everything for us if we use the clean command. Now to compile our program we can now just run let me actually just resize this a bit. Block there we go. Now we can just say make if you have installed CMake you can do this. And here you can see what it does. And here we have utils.o that should be vector.o my bad. Now if you run it there we go. And now we can just run output and we'll get the output. If we change one thing in main and we change this to the distance, so we change one thing in main.c++, we say make. As you can see, it only regenerates one file, only main.cpp because that's the only file we modified. And then it just compiles the already compiled vector and main and we didn't have to generate a new vector.o file and we now have a new output that if we run we get the test and of course if we were to change something in vector.cpp where we change from times to minus again run it and you'll see only vector.o is being regenerated and then of course if we try to run that we get the this then in a smaller value that is the power of cmake and this is a very basic example but cmake can be used to specify c++ versions to compile with specify libraries you want to include in your compile and whatnot now the first thing i want to show you is where a cmake file would have been useful is this is only one file but it could still be rather useful if we go into this main.cpp of a database connection project I made, then here we have this whole linked output and stuff. If we had a cmake file here, we could make that it automatically detects, detects your MariaDB or SQL database you're using and then it could automatically link those databases you're using if we used a cmake file then instead of having to manually do this output here where i in the video where i created a tutorial this said you have to figure out on your own where these are but it should be similar to this if i made a cmake file then this could have been much easier so this is where a cmake file would have been very useful even if it's just one file that cmake file could have found where to link this from and in here is where we'd use a real cmake file so here in gee, there's so many things so here's cmake lists.txt it's very similar to a cmake file you still use a cmake to do this but you instead generate make files for example, here I'm saying CMake, minimum required version, and here I'm saying we need CMake version 3.0 at least before we can compile this. And then here we're setting the CMake build type to debug, so it will build to a debug mode. We could change this to production types. And then here we're setting what flags we want to add to our compile. This is a very basic example, but here we could add a lot of powerful flags to our CMake. And in here we're saying what the project would be called and here we're saying what should be used to generate this executable. Now this isn't a make file. However, it can be used to in a sense generate a make file. If we were to go, then here you'll notice we have a build folder. And here is a make file. Now, I believe if I can just go trash build and just so you know, Nemo, that's what I meant to say. So as you can see, it just has a cmake list.txt file. And it's the same the same cmake list that's here. It's the exact same one. However, if I now go in this folder where that cmake list is and I say cmake, or actually I mean make. <laughs> My bad. I meant to say I think it's cmake that I haven't coded C in such a long time. There we go. Now it actually generated everything here, but as you can see, there is now a make file where before there was no make file. 
there is now make file. And if we were to open up or read that make file, well, let us actually let's just open up in VS Code make file. Here we go. And this is the make file it generates. Because usually writing make files is pretty complicated and disgusting. But here is what it generates for us. So we don't have to write this make file like we did here. We instead create a cmakelists.txt like this. And in the cmakelists.txt will generate that make file for us, giving us all the flags and saying what we should compile and in what the outcome of that compile should be. Now cmakelists is also a something that's on a different level or a different video, different topic. But in a sense, it's basically a make file, but much easier to do. But usually you just kind of take guesses and Google what you want to put here. Usually I just copy paste this and modify it a little bit and that usually works. But there are often times where something more complicated would be a bit better. For example, one of my friends, he made this libytdl application, which is basically a YouTube DLC, but made in C. You can think of it as like that. And here is his CMake file. You can see here we're saying we need at least this version of CMake installed. Here is defining how the project basically is, what it does, the version, the language is used, what not. And here's the, he's defining the CMake module path. And here's the compiler configs. Then there's a bunch of build options. And as you can see, it can get really complex and deep when you get down to it. But as you can see, you can also get if statements and a bunch of other things you can do in here. And this makes compiling your C++ program a lot easier. I'm not going to jump too deep into this because it's a pretty wide topic to cover. But yeah, that's the basics of make files and CMake lists and why you might want to use them. Because now in that compiled program we made with CMake dot, we can now just say make. And here it will build our program for us. It will compile everything. And if I change one thing, it only has to recompile that one thing. And now my BGM player works. And yeah, that's the very basics of CMake and make files. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next C++ tutorial.